Royals have moved to Phoenix, Arizona, a sun-splashed frontier metropolis that's on the move and on the rise. A valley with a population that grows by 60,000 each year. A city with big-time aspirations on all fronts, including major league sports. The Phoenix Suns of the NBA have been a thriving franchise since 1968. And now the National Football League comes to Phoenix as the first NFL regular season game ever in the state of Arizona is minutes away. The Cardinals' new home is Sun Devil Stadium on the campus of Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona, just outside Phoenix. 70,000 plus are here tonight for this Arizona first. And while the sun is still with us and the temperature remains in the 90s, there's an air of anticipation and excitement. The Cards share their stage tonight with their NFC Eastern Division rivals, the Dallas Cowboys. And that means they share that stage with Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker is a one-of-a-kind football player who represents perhaps football's most complete offensive weapon. Walker combines the speed of a world-class sprinter with the power of a weightlifter and the grace and artistry of a dancer. The Cowboys' hopes for a return to NFL prominence rest with number 34. The Cardinals' hopes for a successful home opener rest with stopping number 34. Tonight, for the first time ever, an NFL regular season game from Arizona, the Dallas Cowboys and the Phoenix Cardinals. It'll be a warm evening. This ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Miller Brewing Company, sole sponsor of the U.S. Olympic training. They've lost their openers, and they come in tonight 0-1. They were 7-8 a year ago, and it could have been that the Cardinals might have gone to the playoffs had they won the last football game of the season. They did not. They lost 20-16 to the Dallas Cowboys, and there have been many great games played between these two teams. And quite honestly, these two teams figure to trail the Redskins and the Giants in their NFC Eastern Division, but they have put on some great shows in the past, and we're looking forward to one tonight. It's a bit of a homecoming, if you will, for my two colleagues, Al Michaels and Dan Deerdorf. Al, of course, attended Arizona State University. Dan played 13 years for the Cardinals in, well, their glory days, the glory years, the two of them, I might add. Uh, Dan, but... Uh, uh, Al, did you ever realize they get this many people together for your homecoming? Well, it's terrific uh, being back, and especially since they've expanded the stadium. It used to re be around 37,000, now it's 72,000. Greatest thing about being back, though, is getting even with the old props who called for tickets today. <laughs> the bad news as far as that's concerned, Al, is they gave us a copy of your transcript. Oh, yeah, this from the fine student athlete at Michigan. <laughs> it's odd. The Phoenix Cardinals. At, uh, it's going to take a while for that to settle in with me. I said you're an alumnus. Uh, perhaps they should have brought you your uh, real university. Here they might have played a little better, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> they may have had a better yeah. chance of beating the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Quite honestly, they feel that they have a shot. Uh, they were seven and eight a year ago. The year before that, they were seven and nine. Two losing seasons, but they put together a whole lot of big people. And they got one guy, his name is Herschel Walker. He does things extraordinarily well. He's the key to their offense, but I think the other key, as we talked about during preseason, Frank, is Steve Pallure, their new quarterback, the new number one quarterback. He did a lot of things last week that they loved, but he made two critical mistakes at the end of the game. They were driving for what could have been a game-winning touchdown or at least a game-tying field goal. He called the wrong formation in the huddle. Everybody went left, he went right, exacerbated it by throwing an interception. And later, when they got the ball back, he took an unneeded sack, which took them out of mid field goal range so I'm not sure how many more mistakes Steve Pallure has in his bank account and if Landry goes to the bullpen so to speak early tonight won't that be a scenario because the man he would go to is 36 year old Danny White Danny White grew up here was a big star at Arizona State and so he'd be coming home in an enemy uniform so to speak the enemy being the Phoenix Cardinals, the Phoenix Cardinals. It'll take some getting used to. They're a team like Dallas that lost a very tough game last week. Yeah, really, Al, against Cincinnati. They're on the goal line, first and goal, on two separate occasions. They take eight whacks at it and don't get in the end zone, and thus they lose the ball game. The, the Phoenix Cardinals have their fair share of good football players, guys like Neil Lomax and Roy Green and Louis Sharp and, and all, but primarily they're on the offensive team, which means defensively are they going to be able to stop Herschel Walker and the Dallas Cowboys tonight. I'd look for a high-scoring ball game. The other thing the Cardinals have to deal with tonight is the pressure. A great deal of pressure is on this ball club to win. These fans, 70,000 strong tonight, are paying enormous money to watch this football game tonight. And for that money, they expect to win. And tonight... Well, late afternoon, actually, and early evening, with the sun still shining, but most of the field encased in shadow right now. And even though the temperature is close to 100 degrees, it's dry, and it doesn't feel nearly the way it would were at 100 degrees in the Midwest. As the Cardinals take on 
the Cowboys. So regular season football for the first time ever in Arizona. The team did play a couple of preseason games here at Sun Devil Stadium. And in the past, there have been several games here in this stadium featuring National Football League teams in exhibition play. But now it's for real, and the Dallas Cowboys will receive St. Louis to kick off. Al Del Greco, who was released by Green Bay and then picked up by St. Louis to kick off for the Cardinals, and back deep to receive Darryl Clack and Kelvin Martin. Clack on the near side, Martin on the far side. And so the crowd, with the noise building, anticipating the first ever NFL game for real in the state of Arizona. And we're underway as Del Greco sends it to Clack with a burst of fireworks and balloons ascending in the background. He takes it out to the 22-yard line. Normally, they do that before the game. They released the balloons just as the ball went into the air. And there they are. Well, I thought Del Greco really put the toe to the ball. I thought he broke it. <laughs> yeah, it a sounded little, like it. A little distracting. So here is Pelour. Last week, as you can see, the numbers were good. They'll take that. But the two critical mistakes at the end of the game and Pittsburgh wound up winning it. So Pelour, and of course he has Walker as the main man in the backfield, and Herschel will line up all over the place. Newsom is the other running back. Martin and Irvin are the wide outs. Cosby is the tight end. Pelour to Newsom, and he's taken out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Leonard Smith. The offensive line now for Dallas, where they have tried to beef up over the last couple of years. To an A, Newton, well over 300 pounds, the veteran Rafferty, Kerr, and Gogan, who comes back from a 30-day drug suspension. He tested positive for marijuana. Didn't play last week, though he was eligible, and he suits up tonight and gets into the starting lineup. Second and seven. And Herschel Walker with not much room over the left side. Picks up a yard or two. It'll be third and about five coming up. The Cardinal defense, and it's very suspect, especially up front. The line with Nunn, Clasby, Albert, and Sadler. Nunn, of course, drafted as a linebacker and then moved to the left end spot. Bell, Noga in the middle, and E.J. Jr. are the backers. And the key man there is Leonard Smith, the strong safety, but an interesting story. McDonald goes to free safety, and Lonnie Young, who was a safety, goes to corner for the first time in his career. And there he is, Tim McDonald out of USC. Meanwhile, Dallas has to take a timeout this early in the game, and Landry, who was still steaming after what took place last Sunday in Pittsburgh, can't be a happy man right now as Pelour has to take a timeout on the first drive. Oh, you hate to see this early on, and particularly with the all the problems that grew out of that missed call that Al spoke of last week. The, the Cowboys honestly felt they threw the game away against Pittsburgh, and you touched on it, Al. It was a play sent in on a timeout, silver right, fireman 37. And when Fleur got back to the huddle, he just translated it to fireman 36. And if you know anything about this game, that just flips everything around. And interestingly enough, is Herschel Walker and Newsom who talked it over. They didn't say anything to Fleur. They just changed the formation. All of a sudden, Fleur rolled out. He had nobody with him and threw the interception from inside the five-yard line that they feel cost him the game. And now he comes out and is slow getting the play out. Uh, it, it has to make you think. Well, I think a couple completions in a row, a good touchdown drive, and a win tonight will put Steve Pelour right back where he started. And I think Tom Landry has made his decision that Pelour is the guy that he wants to quarterback this team in the years ahead. Now, Danny White may be a very short-term measure, but He's certainly not the long-term answer at his age. Steve Fuller is the guy. There's okay. Danny White on the sidelines, and I don't know what's going through his head being back here at Sun Devil Stadium and not playing. Third down, five from the 27-yard line. Fuller protected well, goes deep, looks for Walker, has it picked off at the 34-yard line by Tim McDonald. 
So the Cardinals make the change in the secondary, and we just discussed McDonald going in, taking Lonnie Young's spot with Young going to the corner, and McDonald out of USC picks it off after the timeout as the Cowboys pick up where they left off last Sunday. McDonald knew he was on the spot. He was the new man out there, untested, so to speak, at the cornerback. Great collegiate career at safety. Never much time at the corner, however, and he played it absolutely perfect. Walker with that great speed was back there. Palour underthrew the ball, and up goes McDonald with the interception. That was a badly thrown ball. It was a little bit underthrown, and that's the reason for the interception, but I think good defensive position by McDonald that time. Stump Mitchell carries, breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage, and moves forward for a yard or so to the 37 as we take a look at the Phoenix offense. And it's still Neil Lomax coming off a good year. Lomax last week against Cincinnati. Not a bad day, but as Dan discussed early on, those two critical situations where they couldn't punch it in. And that was the difference in the game. Mitchell had a big game. Farrell is the fullback. Smith and Green are the wideouts. And Ewald, the fine receiving tight end. Second down and nine. Phoenix from the 37-yard line. And with Ewald in motion, Lomax looks Ewald's way, sees he's covered, and then throws it off the fingertips of J.T. Smith as he goes back to the other side. It'll be third down and nine. That's the kind of a play with that kind of protection that... Neil Lomax, Neil Lomax rather, just can't afford to overthrow. His offensive line that time gave him superb time up front, and a good look at that group. Sharp, Pete, Kennard, Smith, and Robbins. Anytime you give a quarterback five seconds like Neil Lomax had there, he ought to complete the ball. And Smith made a nice move to the sideline, simply an overthrown pass. Third down and nine. This club would really like, Al, I think, to get something positive early in this ballgame to get this 70,000 crowd behind them because I think they may turn on them if they get behind. Four wide receivers and out of the shotgun. And Lomax juggles the snap but recovers and then throws and no penalty. Novacek was wrapped up by Charles Wright. It was close. Wright, second year back out of Tulsa, who comes in in the dime defense, had him wrapped up incomplete. So fourth down, Kelvin Martin drops back, and Greg Horn out of Arkansas. He was drafted by the Bengals, waived by them, and now kicking for the cards. He stands at his own 23-yard line to take the snap, which is a good one. And the kick comes over to the near side, not much distance, and bounces out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. So Horn's boot is only 31 yards. No score in Phoenix. As you look toward the north, the building in the foreground is the basketball arena. As this is on the campus of Arizona State University in Tempe, which adjoins Phoenix. And in the late afternoon, Dallas against Phoenix. Dallas starting every season since 75, as you see, with a 4-0 or 3-1 record, and Dallas has not lost its first two games in the season since 1963. That's 25 years ago, and if they lose tonight, they would be 0-2. Their second possession as Palour pump fakes and then lost it over in the direction of Timmy Newsom, who moves it out to the 37-yard line, a pickup of about four. Anthony Bell and Leonard Smith converge on the tackle. That's a fine read by Pelour. I don't think the Cowboys are anticipating much zone tonight. Gene Stallings, when he was with the uh, Dallas Cowboys, he believed in the man-for-man -man defense. He's brought it to the Cardinals over the past three years, and all of a sudden, Pelour looked up, and he saw a full-blown zone, and he came off it very quickly, had the man out in the flat, and got it out to Newsom, and got some good yardage out of it. Good move by the young quarterback. I keep calling him young. He's been around five years. They keep saying he's learning in the learning process, but he's here now in his fifth year. They keep comparing him to White, and he is young next to Danny, who's 36. On second and six, Herschel Walker wrapped up at the 40-yard line, charged led by Lonnie Young. It'll be third down and about three for Dallas at their own 40, with 11.50 to play in the first quarter. I think back to what you said earlier, Al, about the last time the Cowboys opened up at 0-2. 
Tom Landry, who just turned 64 years old, that means he was 39 the last time that they went 0-2 25 years ago, mm -hmm. back in 63. 39 years old. I, like I have a hard time getting that picture of Tom Landry at <laughs> I don't like to think about it because I played with him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was very precocious. Still on. Yes. Third and three from the 40-yard line. Galore rolling, flag thrown. Newsom gets hit as he throws. He's the intended receiver. Lonnie Young covering on the play, and we have a penalty marker on the play. I think you're going to get a holding against Dallas. I think Freddie Joe Nunn, the left end, was horse collar trying to get upfield. Number 66 on the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. I think that's Kevin Gogan, the right tackle, who lines up across from Freddie Joe. Oh, a great look at Freddie Joe taking the inside move, and, well, what was that word I used last week? Effecticity? <laughs> that, that wasn't even that. That was just plain holding that didn't work at all. Gogan, his first game back after the suspension, and not a good start. <laughs> Saw none at the best, too. He is not very big, but he is extraordinarily quick, and he got inside Gogan before he knew he was coming. He had to hold him. Mike Saxon to kick to Vi Sikahema, who's been to the Pro Bowl his first two years in the league. Premier punt returner. Sikahema takes it at the 17-yard line. And he's wrapped up at the 24. Tackled by Lockhart. 44-yard kick. Eight-yard run back. Phoenix has the ball. 1983 was actually the last game of the 1982 regular season and one to remember Tony Dorsett of the Cowboys from his own one yard line a record 99 yard touchdown run and that despite the fact that it was discovered later the Cowboys had only 10 men on the field I'll never forget the words of Don Merritt at that night said, how about that 99 and a half yards <laughs> yeah. it, if they'd had 11 men on the field, it would have been 99 and a half. A Tony over 100 yesterday for Denver. Yeah. Big day and a Bronco win. From the blip. 24-yard line. Phoenix has it for the second time in the game, and Stump Mitchell pays the price as he's banged down by Kevin Brooks in his fourth year out of Michigan and really beginning to come into his own. This might be the best matchup on the line when the Cardinals have the ball. Luis Sharp, number 67, a Pro Bowl tackle last year, working against ASU alumni Jim Jeffcoat. And that time, Sharp pretty effective in taking Jim Jeffcoat to the outside and allowing all 188 pounds of Stump Mitchell to get away to the inside. By the way, told me last night the Cowboys, the only team in the East that Stump hasn't had a 100-yard game against. Mm. Second and seven from the 27-yard line. A walk in motion. And Mitchell wrapped up number 73, Danny Noonan, in his second year. The number one draft choice a year ago out of Nebraska pays a dividend. Another one of those number one draft picks. And the Cowboys start four of them on their 4-3 defense. Ed Jones, he was a one, as was Brooks, Noonan, Jeff Goat. And interestingly enough, in their secondary, all four of their starters are free agents. So they have start four agents, three agents in the back, and they start the number one picks up front. Here's another number one draft pick. Now his 14th year and still suffering from that bad neck. He is now a pass rush specialist, though he lines up at right tackle here on third down and five. Green in motion, and Lomax goes to Green, and Green tried to fight his way forward for a first down, but I don't think he got it. He is just shy of the first down as they'll spot it at the 33-yard line. I, I think that's a situation where Roy Green misread where the markers were when he made his break. He was trailing on the pattern and, and did a curl where I would have to assume that he thought he had first down yardage when in reality he's about a yard short. A curious pattern on, on, on third and only about five yards to not run a hook deep enough to give you the first down. Billy Bates that time with a tackle that didn't allow Green to stretch out for the first down. He had him below and Wright had him above. And Green trying to talk his way into more forward progress. And they'll have to bring the chains in from the other side of the field. Red Cashin is the referee tonight. I don't think they're going no. to get it. No. Nope. He's that much shy, and 
Gene Stallings knows all too well how tough it is to pick up a yard <laughs> after last week's game, and he's not going to gamble this early. No, isn't it funny, though, what a game this is of, of little things and little moves and tackles and, and the effort that time by Bates and not letting Roy Green get the first down, forcing a punting situation. When the game is said and done and the teams are on their buses out of here, you really have to wonder what kind of an impact all those little plays when added together, Frank, how yep. they determine who wins and who loses. They seem so dramatic at the end of the game, but they all count just about the same. Greg Horn, his second kick, line of scrimmage is the 34. Beautiful. Kelvin Martin backs all the way up to the 15. 30. And knocked down at the 35-yard line. A 21-yard run back. Ricky Hundley making the tackle after a 52-yard kick. No score with 8.37 to play in the first quarter. Downtown Phoenix and the mountains in the distance and pulling back as the blip hovers above Sun Devil Stadium. The plane in the flight pattern landing at Sky Harbor in your shot right there. I think we're above them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> High above Sun Devil Stadium from the 36. First and 10 for Dallas, and Palour finds Martin out of bounds at the 36-yard line. So Palour protected well, and then Martin makes the catch. Well, that's where Gene Stallings' experiment is starting to backfire a little bit because that's Jan Lonnie Young out there playing cornerback, and he just fell down on the play. Kelvin Martin puts a good move to the inside, then works back to the outside. And it puts Lonnie Young right on the turf. You can see him on all fours in the background. And good thing for the Cardinals, that pattern was run into the sideline, or that would have been an easy touchdown for Kelvin Martin. Stallings has got to know they're not going to let up on it either. Oh, they're going to go there every play. Their other Kelvin, the wide receiver, Edwards, is out. Injured knee. Pelour, and he can run. And down he goes at the 32-yard line with some assistance from E.J. Jr. Ballour is a good athlete, scrambles well, but really takes a lot of shots. And, and don't we know that all too well after that preseason game against the Chicago Bears when he was knocked out, suffered a concussion, and had to come out of the game. He filled in for Danny White at the season of 86 when Danny White broke his wrist. He took 46 sacks and survived it, and I think that's when Tom decided, I'm going to keep him around while I rebuild, because that's what you need when you're rebuilding. Second and six from the 32-yard line. Timmy Newsom gets to the 30. It'll be third down and four coming up with seven minutes and 35 seconds left in the first quarter and no score. Anthony Bell that time, the linebacker in making the tackle, number 55. He's going to fight off the block by Herschel Walker, I believe. Bell, the fifth player taken in the draft back in 86. And that's Herschel playing lead blocker for Newsom and not very effectively either. Bell that time fighting it off to the inside and making the play for only a couple of yards. Third down and a short four as the ball is just inside the 30-yard line. Michael Irvin is the man in motion. Look out from the backside, and Pelour gets hit as he throws. Incomplete. Flying in, E.J. Jr., nobody picked him up, and he caused the errant pass. The Cardinals got themselves in a funny man-for-man -man defense as we look at that again, and there is a flag down, but we'll take a quick peek at it. Watch Tim Newsom there to the left, Frank. Watch him run right by Junior, and it was Loga who was trying to cover him as he came out of the backfield. Strange kind of a defense, and I'm sure they was not lost on a Dallas. And that's the price you pay when you have to hold on to it a little extra. And that's one way to get Danny White in a ball game in a hurry. Offside was the call against Dallas, declined. And now Dallas with Zendejas to attempt a field goal. Luis Zendejas knows this stadium very well. He went to Arizona State. And he's a very interesting case because Roger Ruzek, who did a great job for them last year, was a late signee. They got a two-game roster exemption for him. Could have activated him today, but didn't. Instead, it's Zendejas, a 47-yard attempt, and he comes home. He feels at home on this turf and boots it through by plenty. 6.55 to go in the first quarter with Dallas on top. 
Three nothing. Those seats cost. <laughs> Those are the ones, uh, Dan, without the premium. <laughs> yeah. Well, the average sheet here is 38 bucks. That goes for about 22.50, I think. Those are the ones that had to be sold by Friday at five to avoid <laughs> the blackout. <laughs> right. Dallas and Phoenix, first ever regular season game in Arizona. Cowboys on top. 3-0. Zendejas kicks off and a beauty deep into the end zone for the touchback. Fielded by Sikahema. Lomax leading the cards on this drive starting at the 20 and he talks about his most memorable moment. I think my greatest memory in all football has got to be uh, my days at Portland State. I had so much fun. Uh, we threw the ball every single down. And the game I, most memorable to me is when I threw 77 passes in one game. I completed like 50 of them about 600 yards and we still lost <laughs> yeah, he was uh, he was up there with the old run and shoot under mouse davis i'd like to meet his defense <laughs> well the clint didier was his one of his top receivers sure was there, neil lomax still very close to mouse davis daryl mouse davis yeah. got a penalty down on the field right now penalty has been declined and the cardinals will set up shop at the 20 yard line and Neil, has, as I said, has maintained that relationship with Davis all these years, and I know in the back of his mind would someday just like to take that run and gun to the NFL and see what happens with it. Jim Kelly did all right with it in Houston. It's an offense that works. Lomax turns and gives the ball to Earl Farrell, and that's his first carry tonight. The fullback takes it out to the 26-yard line. The man in there to take some of the pressure off Stump Mitchell. Gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Phoenix at its own 26-yard line. 6.28 to play in the quarter. Kind of and back every team needs. He can block. He's a good receiver, good runner, and he holds on to the football for you. On second and four, Lomax goes deep, too deep. Intended for Jane Novacek, the tight end, and the strong safety, Bill Bates stayed with him step for step. Well, that's something I think we're going to see. They're going to try to get Bates locked up in single coverage. He's probably the worst cover guy back in the Dallas secondary. Edward, too tall Jones going against Tootie Robbins. A good inside fake, but Robbins, like a lot of tackles, don't stay on his feet, rode him to the outside. This is slow on slow. Yeah, <laughs> These are not the two fastest people on the field, Jay Novacek and Bill Bates. And that was slow motion, I guess, not full speed. <laughs> but the Cardinals, I know, would like to get some single coverage on Bates. I think they'd rather do it, though, with a wide receiver. Third and four. Green makes a catch at the 36-yard line. Roy Green reaching up for it. A great pair of wide receivers for St. Louis. And Green and J.T. Smith, though, both are getting up in years. You have to respect him deep, and that time, Roy Green, who still in his 10th year has a lot of speed, has a lot of time to come down with it. This time, he gets enough yardage before he's hit by Michael Downs. He bounces off and gets a couple more. Still a lot of talent out there on the corners. J.T. Smith around 11 years, Roy Green around 10. Green 31, Smith is 32. From the 36, first and 10, Stump Mitchell to the outside. Taken down at the 40-yard line, Kevin Brooks, number 99, making the tackle. And I don't know where you're going to find a tougher 188 pounds. Dan alluded to the fact that he's never had a 100-yarder against the Cowboys, and he was telling you that, but he had a 99-yarder in the final game of the season a year ago, and had the Cardinals been able to win that, they would have gone to the playoffs, but what does Gene Stalling say about him? He's going to give you all he's got every time he goes out there. It might not be enough, but he's going to give it to you. I was still on the team when we drafted Mitchell out of the Citadel, and the first time he walked in the locker room, he said, no way is this kid going to make it. And, uh, it's a classic case of it's just there's a lot more there than 188 pounds. On second and six, Earl Farrell gets wrapped up by the whole Dallas line led by Jim Jeffco. Takes it out to the 43-yard line. Will be third down. And three with four and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. And Dallas on top, 3 nothing. Going back to Stump Mitchell again, just to make a point about guys now in the league like Joe Morris. And you see his brother Jamie coming in with the Washington Redskins. I, I think the days of saying, well, I have to have that big back that can pound it up in there 
I think some teams are proving you don't necessarily have to have that 240-pound guy anymore as long as the 190-pound guy you have runs like a 240-pound. It's all situational. You can get him in and you can get him out. Shotgun on third and three, four wide receivers. He finds Green for a first down into Dallas territory, tackled at the 48-yard line by Manny Hendricks. Manny Hendricks made the stop. First down. Basically the same motion that Roy Green ran before on that pattern where he didn't pick up the first down. Only this time, rather than curling, he goes ahead and takes it to the sidelines. Looks like Manny Hendricks, the defender on the play, was expecting him to sit down, but this time an effective route going to the sidelines. The Cardinals, a multiple formation, all over the field offensive team that just seemed to move the ball perfectly between the 20s. Then they seem to tighten up once they get near the goal line. Green has already made three catches for 23 yards. A Walt in motion. Ball at the Dallas 48-yard line. Lomax to throw again under pressure and incomplete. A Walt was cutting inside and the pass to the outside. Garth Jacks put the pressure on Lomax that time. Lomax that time uh, really uncharacteristic for him. He dumped that ball off. He had changed that play. He wanted to go deep to Roy Green. He had single coverage on Robert Williams out on the left side, but the blitz was on. He didn't have time to do it. So often you'll see, uh, here was the man he wanted to go to. So often you'll see Lomax, though, take the sack. He is sacked perhaps more than anyone in this game. And there is a lot of discussion as to why he is sacked, whether he should be releasing it more. But he gets sacked very often. Smith in motion on second down and 10. Cardinals still shifting. Now they're set with a slot right formation. And Lomax going to the left for Green, and Green makes the catch. He's already made four. That one comes at the 36 in front of Robert Williams. Green has had many, many big days against Dallas. He's caught eight touchdown passes in his last 10 games against the Cowboys. And Williams is in the same boat that Lonnie Young is for the Cardinals. He is the man you're going to work on because Robert Williams right there coming back, laying way off of Green. And you have to do that, particularly man for man, because of the speed. But he to the 26-yard line. So he picks up 70. He's stopped there by Bates. I know one thing. Landry probably wishes Pelour had a wristband last Sunday. <laughs> I was going to get to that. When you mess it up, it messes up in a heavy way. And Pelour found out last week. Reverse a number, leave one out, and it can make a world of difference. The thing that puzzled me about the Pelour play, and we brought it up last night, was why somebody else on that football team didn't turn around and say to Pelour, "Hey, you you called the wrong formation, or you called the wrong play with the wrong for, with the right formation." Somebody should have said that. You know that's true, Dan. Yeah, you think of all the veterans in that huddle. Walker, Newsom, Doug Cosby, Tom Rafferty over the ball at center. They all knew that it was the wrong call by Steve Pelour. And hey, Frank, I've been in the huddle lots of times where quarterbacks have called the wrong play. Non-existent plays. Forgotten the snap count. I mean, a lot of pressure on these guys. But that's really where you kind of need a helping hand from your teammates. You make a, a valid point. I think... Uh, Pelour may have, may have made the wrong call, but I think all, a lot, all 11 guys in that huddle have to share the blame. Might have a little to do with the philosophy to the Cowboys. They're sort of, you do what we tell you to do out there. First and 10 from the 26. Lomax over the middle has it knocked away. Green, the intended receiver, and Bates deflected it. Oh, that's what they want, though, against Roy Green when he goes deep. You want to have your cornerback on the outside you want to have help from the inside and Everson Walls who's one of the best still at man for man and he's not fast he's just very good at timing it and there he is now he'll stay on the outside he's not going to let Green get in that corner no way Bates laying on the inside and look at this couldn't be better a beautiful look at did you see the way Walls there veered back towards the corner knowing he had that inside help and underneath now that's that's a veteran play by Everson Walls who still I think doesn't want to get into a one-on-one -on -one foot, foot race with Roy Green. He loses it hand down, and he knows it. Yeah, even with Roy in his 10th year. Second and 10, the 12th play of this drive is a draw, and Mitchell turns a loss into a little bit of a game. As Stump goes out of bounds at the 23-yard line, eluding Garth Jackson first for what would have been about a five-yard loss, and instead picks up about four. I bet Jax can't believe he missed it. Comes in totally untouched, and has a clean shot at Mitchell and ends up with nothing. And then to make it even worse, he has to go to the sidelines and explain himself. Hmm. But he's so short. I don't, he was <laughs> there and then he wasn't there. Third and seven, good down for the Cowboys in this territory to think in terms of blitz, maybe even a safety blitz. Perhaps to move back a field goal attempt even further. 
Randy White in for the pass rush on third and seven. Four receivers out of the shotgun. Farrell stays in the block. Lomax steps up and has it knocked down by Billy Owens, who had Dallas's only sack last week at Pittsburgh. The reserve defensive back batting it down. Well, he's the spy. That's all he does. Sits three or four yards behind the line of scrimmage and waits for either someone to break out of the backfield or else something like this. And he gets up in the air with his arms, and Owens knocks down the ball. But his primary responsibility, number one, the draw. Number two, if the quarterback scrambles out of the pocket. And number three, if you're a good enough athlete, do what he did there, knock down a pass. 40-yard field goal attempt now. Cliff Stout holding for Al Del Greco to try to tie the game with a minute and a half to play in the first quarter. And the kick is no good. Had plenty of distance, but wide to the left. So Del Greco, who had one opportunity last week, a long one for more than 50, missed that. Misses here. And Dallas takes over with a 3-0 lead and 127 to play in the quarter. And the Cardinal kicking woes continue. And I think all the way back to the late 70s when Bud Wilkinson at the time released Jim Bakken in favor of our number one draft choice in 78, Steve Little. And Steve... The victim of a tragic automobile accident didn't work out, and it's been 10 years since the Cardinals have had any consistency in their kicking game. And they even used that high pick for John Lee a couple of years back that didn't work out. Herschel Walker fights his way out to the 25-yard line for a gain of two. Thus far, Gene Stallings has been successful, and his defense basically is predicated on where is Herschel. And they are going to set that defense pretty much man for man in the secondary for, for most of the game, but they also are concentrating wherever Herschel goes. If he goes out as a wide receiver, they'll try and get double coverage, and they'll give him a long look when he's in this tailback spot. All eyes are on 34. Second and eight with a double tight end set up as Pelour lost it for Irvin. Incomplete. Too far. Irvin had gotten behind the corner. Carl Carter. He had him beat. But Pelour overthrows him. Oh, that's six points if Pelour puts that back in the middle. The blitz was on. You had man-for-man -man coverage. It was Irving against Carter. He'll run right by him. Had Pelour laid this up in the middle, it's six points because he had room to come back in and get it. That's a full sprint by Carl Carter. Cardinals took a real chance that time with their coverage, overplaying the run up the middle and locking both of their corners into single coverage. I'm sure that's been duly noted over on the Cowboys' sideline. Third and eight out of the shotgun. Everett Gay is in there as a wide receiver to the left. And Pelour, after looking right, will scramble and is knocked down at the 26-yard line as Tim McDonald comes up from the secondary to stop him. And they did it again. They locked up a man for man in the corners. It's just good coverage, and there was no place for Pelour to put it. I think Gene Stallings is saying, this is my system. And I'm going to play it whether my football players adapt to that system and conform to it and fit into it. And uh, that's that's risky. Final play of the first quarter or Dallas could opt to just let the clock run out. And like we said, we look for a high scoring contest. <laughs> yeah, right. Right on the money again. And that's the end of the first quarter. One quarter does not a game make. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that before. 3 nothing Dallas. We'll return to Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona for the second quarter after this message. And a word from your local station. Hey, above the action at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. I wouldn't say we're high, but it's the only booth in America where you look down on the Goodyear blimp. Don't get vertigo as we pan down. We are up here. Games like this make me wish I wore glasses. <laughs> the monitor is so clear for you, however. <laughs> So here we are, calling the game from Los Angeles as Dallas kicks to start the second quarter. Mike Saxon boots it in the air. Taken to the 25-yard line by Vi Sikahema. And he brings it back to the 33. So we start the second quarter in Phoenix, Arizona, as this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Buick. And your Buick dealer, the Great American Road, belongs to Buick. We call it Phoenix. It's really Tempe, but Tempe is a lot closer to Phoenix than, let's say, Anaheim is to Los Angeles. Good look at the stadium from the Goodyear blimp, and it really is a good football stadium. The seats are close to the field. There's no running track around the perimeter of the field. The seats are close. It's, as I look at it, I don't see a whole lot of bad seats in this stadium. The interesting thing about this stadium, it's about 
72,000 in terms of capacity. There are only about 27 to 28,000 seats with backs on them. Everybody else just sits on a bench. Looks like there's going to be another punting situation. The Cowboys are going to have to kick again. Originally, there would have to be a dome stadium here, and uh, that did not eventuate, and they were going to add the luxury boxes next year and a lot of stadium they're going to improvements all over the area. They're building new locker rooms, so I think they're going to be playing it for a time to be. The penalty was on Tuine. He was downfield illegally, and so Saxon to kick again, and he gets a good bounce, a oh. real good bounce, taken by Sikahema at the 28th, and he brings it back only to the 30-yard line. Manny Hendricks makes the tackle, so from that spot, after a 49-yard kick and a two-yard run back, will the next drive begin? In terms of attendance, well, Dan, you know this all too well. The baseball Cardinals with that tremendous support vis-a-vis -vis the football cards last year. Well, I, I, th I don't think you go by that 27,000 figure, because keep in mind, everyone in St. Louis knew that the Cardinals were leaving, mm -hmm. and I think there was a great deal of resentment to build up in the community over that, so a lot of people stayed away intentionally. I mean, when the team was part of St. Louis, that attendance figure was up in the 40s. Well, they're also 7-8 and 4-11-1 and the year before. Haven't been a lot of playoff games in St. Louis. Earl Farrell like from the nuts. 30. 35 and fights his way for a first down out to the 41-yard line. Earl Farrell run out by Danny Noonan and Eugene Lockhart. I like Earl Farrell. He is a solid football player. And I think that he'd start for most teams in this league at fullback. A good receiver, a good hard runner, and a good team player. And a little more elusive than Bill Bates thought. Bill Bates didn't think Farrell could beat him back to the inside, and Earl a little more nifty than some people might think it for a guy that's 240 pounds. Pretty light on his feet. He's carried four times for 28 yards from the 42-yard line. Tony Jordan is in the game at tailback. The good-looking... Rookie out of Kansas State. That's he with Farrell lined up behind Lomax, and they fake it to him. And then throw complete. Nice move by Smith to make the catch at the 47 and get a first down stop at the 45-yard line. J.T. Smith resurrected. Started his career brilliantly with Kansas City. Then that swale period released by the Chiefs, picked up by the Cards, born again. Hard to believe that John Makovic, then the coach of the Chiefs, just didn't like J.T. Smith. I mean, he just didn't think he could any longer contribute to the Chiefs and seldom do you get a guy off the waiver wire that makes an impact on your team the way J.T. Smith has with the Cardinals. Unbelievable. At the Dallas 45-yard line, Farrell, flea flicker, Lomax gets bumped as he throws, still completes it down the near side to Mitchell, and he gets to the 18-yard line. <laughs> Everson Walls made the stop. That might be the ugliest flea flicker in the history of the game. <laughs> stop came through there on the play action fake. The intended receiver was really Roy Green coming way across field. They picked up good coverage on him. Stump just hanging out, so to speak. All of a sudden, Lomax is in trouble. He finds him, and here it is again. Now, he's looking deep for Green right at this point, and he just releases the ball before Burton hammers him right to the turf but Stump was there and he gets the first down. I think Burton actually hit him in the throwing motion. I mean that ball fluttered on its way out to to Stump. That was some kind of effort by Neil Lomax just to get the ball out to Mitchell. First and 10 Phoenix from the 17 yard line. Mitchell looks for room finds nothing. Pick up of a yard or so with 12.50 to play in the first half. Dallas on top on a Zendejas field goal, 3-0. Remember how I said before how effectively the Cardinals moved the ball between the 20s. Here they are down now what you call the red zone inside their opponent's 20-yard line. And this is where traditionally the Cardinals have had difficulty stuffing it into the end zone. Ernie Stotner, the defensive coordinator for the Cowboys, he's a formidable foe. Second and nine. Lomax to Farrell. Touchdown. Safety blitz. And Lomax kept it alive. He paid for it, but he gets the touchdown. He waited until the man uncovered Farrell. He was looking for his wide receivers, Green and Smith. Coverage was good. 
stayed in there once again and got it to him. This is exactly what we were told last night. Watch Farrell come in and make the block on Michael Downs and then release and go down for the touchdown. Gene Stallings told us about this play last night. Earl Farrell is going to check in the line, make a block, and then release, and by that time, he's lost in the Cowboys' secondary. If Michael Downs would have come right at Farrell, he would have hit him as it is. He just hides, releases, and seldom does a coach draw it up like he drew it for us last night, mm -hmm. and we see it translated into that kind of a touchdown. Del Greco for the extra point, and Stallings, of course, spent so many years as an assistant at Dallas, and nobody knows Landry better. They think exactly alike. It was Landry who probably taught Stallings more about football than anyone else in his career, and it paid off beautifully here. He knew exactly what Dallas would be doing. First appeared on Monday Night Football in Monday Night Football's initial season, 1970, and the night belonged to the Cardinals. John Gilliam scoring here en route to a 38-0 St. Louis victory at the Cotton Bowl. Yep, Dallas used to play in the Cotton Bowl, now Texas Stadium, and the Cardinals from Bush Stadium to Sun Devil Stadium. As the kickoff is taken by Darrell Clack from the three, Tripped up at the 35-yard line. Good run back for Clack. Again, Neil Lomax, it was a safety blitz. An effective job up front. Neil stood back there a good five seconds. We showed you before how Earl Farrell faked up inside the line. Lomax held on to the last second, and Eugene Lockhart there, who's following Earl Farrell, really didn't have any chance on the play. That wasn't his man, and... Too late to react. A well-designed play and extremely well executed by Earl Farrell. Cowboys from their own 35-yard line. Phoenix on top. Fake toss to Walker. Pelour on a roll. And Pelour found his intended receiver covered. And so he runs and is chased out of bounds after a pickup of about six. Sure looked nonchalant when he decided to go ahead and Take off with the football. That was a cruise to the sideline if I ever saw one. And in the cruise to the sidelines, you missed it by about a foot. If you're going to go, you better go. Actually, it's a gain of, of close to, to nine yards, and they're going to bring the chains in. The Goodyear blimp looming above Sun Devil Stadium. You saw the total yardage of better than two to one. Ratio favoring the Cardinals, and that's where he knew where he was going, Dan, mm. all the time. Pelour's jog picks up a first down. The master, 29 years, Tom Landry's been walking along that sideline. He's seen the ups and he's seen the downs. Haven't been to the Super Bowl since 1978, however. And in a full-blown rebuilding program, uh, what he's really done, he's put together a massive offensive line to work in front of Herschel Walker. They average 290 pounds. Got to change that in. From the 45-yard line, Walker turns the corner. Gets into Cardinal territory. A flag is thrown. He has enough for a first down as he gains 13, putting the shoulder down. Ridden out of bounds by Smith. And Red Cashin with the call against the Cardinals. I don't care what they do with it. When you watch Herschel Walker, you can't believe he's doing what he's doing because it's like slow motion. Well, that's an off-tackle play, Frank, that he, you know, he sells everybody in a red jersey that he's taking that inside, and he gets to the outside and breaks contained so easily. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, what, that's what the vast majority of people who carry the ball in this league, they can't do that. Of course, it's not going to count. It's all coming back because of the hold, but... Uh, that, you know, that's a play that he makes look very ordinary, that it's exceptional. Three on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, still first down. Cashman initially motioning, that's why I said the penalty against the Cards. In fact, it's against Martin, Kelvin Martin for the hold, the wide receiver, and it brings the ball back to the 38-yard line. And they bring it back, but just looking at something that, like that, if you've ever carried that thing, you kind of marvel at it because... Takes it inside, dips it to the outside, and at 225 or 230 pounds, he has that tremendous speed, and it's almost like he's just loping out there, and yet he whacks off 10 yards. Penalty assessed from the spot of the foul, and thus it's first down and 17 from the 38-yard line. 11.54 to play in the half. Walker on the delay. Stopped out at the 42-yard line by Steve Alvord, number 60. Walker against the Cardinals 
Not bad in his two years in the league. Herschel, and he'll line up all over the place. Last week, tailback most of the time, fullback, wing, slot, and there's a wide out. Well, until Michael Irving started to develop, they said he's our best runner, our best blocker, and our best receiver. They were very open about it. On second and 12, everybody into the pattern and batted back. Rod Sadler, number 72, has his moment in the sun, or the dust, as it were. Well, Rod Sadler and two other Cardinals. I mean, that's that's a play where Steve Pelour literally just disappears. They oh. brought Carl Carter on this, and if you've ever seen a pocket collapse, this is it. Clasby coming from the outside. Sadler's in there. Alford as well. And Steve Pelour takes a shot like he hasn't seen in a while. And We've mentioned before that he's no stranger to standing in the pocket and taking a hit. I, I was impressed last night when we talked about how big he is. Yeah, I mean, he's a big man. Third down, 13. At the 41-yard line. Pelour from the gun. And a whistle before the snap. The clock was down to zero, the 45-second clock. That's what we're going to get. We're going to get delay against Dallas. Steve is looking it over, was going to change it, and ran out of time. Delay the game by the offense, still third down. What he saw was right. They had a safety blitz on. He just was slow in changing it, maybe slow in recognizing it, or for that matter, maybe he shouldn't have tried. Boy, oh, interesting game coming up, both the Colts and the Browns. Tough starts. And the Browns, of course, losing Danielson yesterday and they lost Kozar the opening week and they're hopefully going to come up with a quarterback for us. They signed Don Strock today Strzok to go with he knew Mike he was on his way. Yep, they signed him. I don't know if he'll want to play. <laughs> they lose Kozar in week one. Danielson yesterday. They may have trouble pushing Don Strock out onto the field. Third down and 18. Herschel Walker slotted to the left and out into the pattern. And Pelour going the other way. The open man is Martin. And he's out of bounds at the 43-yard line, a first down. He beats Lonnie Young on the play. Oh, he killed Lonnie Young on the play. He drove him to the inside. Lonnie Young fought it all the way again. Lonnie Young trying to work on the corner when he's a safety. Watch the top of your screen. Takes him to the inside and just splits him. And is wide open, but knows where that first down marker is also. Great roof. And a good throw by Pelour as well, but we told you earlier about Gene Stallings' experiment with Lonnie Young at corner, and so far it's not working out very well. First down, Dallas, 42-yard line. Herschel. Herschel Walker. To the 37-yard line as Young comes up to support and makes the tackle and there's a marker down. And Leonard Smith of the Cardinals may draw a flag for a personal foul. He's face to face with Michael Irvin and it's going to be a question who threw the first punch. I thought I saw Leonard Smith toss one. Question will be whether the official saw Irvin or not. Man, he just goes looking for people to hit, doesn't he? Oh, this guy will just he'll take you to pieces. I don't know that there's a strong safety in the game that hits harder than Leonard Smith. You think there's a little join going on between Smith and Irvin tonight? Well, if, if nobody in the league hits harder than Leonard Smith, nobody in the league talks more than Michael Irvin. Irvin's number 88, and now the play is over. Keep in mind, the play's all but over. There's shot number one, shot number two, and there's the face mask. You just can't grab a player by the face mask and look at Irvin. He's a rookie, but that's yeah, smart. Yeah. Oh, Puts that his smart. hands up and says, hey, Has it's he not quickly. Me. Put your hands up, and they always see the second blow or the second foul. You don't grab a guy by the face mask. Now, the ball hasn't been We've got unnecessary roughness. Number 88 on the offense. We've got unnecessary roughness for the face mask. Number 45 on the defense. After the ball is dead, it'll be second down. Well, well get Irving. That's the best the Cardinals could hope for, and I think it's safe to say that Michael Irvin is getting chewed out from the press box. Just don't need to become involved in stuff like that, and this guy's this guy's making a career of it in two games. I think Paul Hackett might be having a few words with him. He's the coach of the quarterbacks and the receivers. 
Second and five. Dallas at the Phoenix 37-yard line. Cardinals ahead, 7-3. Walker. Pulls his way to the 31 and a first down. Nico Noga and Tim McDonald on the stop. Had an interesting visit with Herschel Walker last night. Fine young man. He has been nominated as the Traveler's Man of the Year for the Dallas Cowboys. And as we did a year ago, the NFL's Traveler's Man of the Year, who not only performs on the field but in the community, will be honored once again at the Super Bowl. Mr. Walker, representing the Cowboys. I wonder if the Traveler's Man of the Year has ever gone into the FBI before. Herschel said he still wanted to go into the FBI. <laughs> Deadly serious in saying it. Says Mrs. Walker doesn't want him to yes. go into the FBI. Yes, yeah, she has other ideas. From the 31-yard line, first and 10. Over the middle and incomplete, intended for Folsom. He's the young tight end who was in motion and wasn't looking back as Pelour released. Other than that, he did everything perfectly. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good pattern. <laughs> uh, one of the prerequisites of catching a pass is to look at the quarterback to know when the ball is coming, and Steve Folsom, number 85, uh, didn't learn that lesson. But have four wide receivers now coming into the lineup. It'll be very interesting. Now, now they have three, but it'll be very interesting if they don't go looking once again for Lonnie Young. On second and ten, the fake and going deep and knocked away. Intended for Gay, Carl Carter, man for man with him. Everett Gay in the end zone, and Carl Carter with the defense. Fine coverage. They sold the run to Herschel Walker. They sure did. They pulled the guard. They made it look like run all the way, and again, the Cardinals locking up one-on-one. -on -one. Their corners and a wide receiver, and that's just superb defensive mm. Play oh, there good. by Carl Carter. That's it. That's as good as it gets. The last second. That was in slow motion. You see it in regular speed, and it's a brilliant play. Is what it is. He sees the ball. He knows it's going to be close. Gets the hand in between the outstretched arms of Gay and knocks it away. Beautiful. You may, you may say there was a little contact there, but that's not going to get called this year. Third down and ten from the 31-yard line. Lofted for Gay again. Too far. Leonard Smith that time on the blitz, forcing the early release. That time it was Reggie Phillips, the ex-Chicago Bear, who had the coverage on Gay. That ball coming down though looked more like a punt than a pass. Delura is going to need some ointment tonight. He is getting hammered. He's avoiding the sack that he's getting killed after he releases. He's trying to throw this ball away. And on the blitz, the safety, Smith, we talked about how he hits. Now Zendejas, 49 yards out. He's already made one from 47, and this one is low and blocked. And out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Never got it up. Well, the Cardinal defensive team that a lot of people thought would have trouble stopping the Cowboys have stiffened. Let's see if we can see who gets a hand on this one. The kick is low. There's no doubt about that. Bob Clasby, one of the guys in there. The Cardinals hold. In the desert and a plane in the landing pattern for Sky Harbor Airport in Phoenix as you look down from the Goodyear blimp into Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona, where the Phoenix Cardinals have the ball. 7-3, 9-23 to play in the first half. Neil Lomax sends A. Walt in motion and tosses it to Stump Mitchell going to the outside. Mitchell, no place to go, and stopped at the 30 for a loss of one. Downs coming up to make the tackle, and we've got a doubleheader coming your way on ABC's College Football, beginning at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific time, Saturday, Notre Dame against Michigan State. Irish coming off their win over Michigan. Michigan State shocked by Rutgers. That's the opener from East Lansing. And then the Wolverines hail to the victors' valiant host Miami in Ann Arbor. Broke my heart Saturday night. Yeah. Re Reggie Ho did my boys in. Wait till Saturday. <laughs> Second down and 11 from the 30-yard line. And it's caught by Awalt out at the 41, very close to a first down. This is what Awalt will do for you. He's a tight end that can move out and play the wide receiver position. 
You sacrifice a little with AWOL on the blocking, but he can give you a lot of variety to your offense when he splits out. Only Mark Bavaro had more catches for a tight end in the right, NFC right, last year than this kid, who's a, the rookie of the year. 42 catches last year, four touchdowns. And of course, having a quarterback like Neil Lomax doesn't hurt at all. He likes to use his tight end and his offense a great deal, working that intermediate passing game. Third and inches coming up for the Cardinals at the 41. So much made about the, the heat before this game. People wondering how hot it would be. Actually, it's uh, it's pretty pleasant. Very dry and very comfortable. Remember last evening at 5 o'clock, we were with the Cardinals and at their workout. It was a very pleasant evening, beautiful evening. The Redskins will find out firsthand uh, how hot it might get here because they'll play the first day game at Sun Devil Stadium uh, a week from next Sunday. At a 1 o'clock? Yeah. It wasn't so nice at 1 o'clock today, I can assure you. No, not in the sun. It's, it's oh. pleasant in the shade, but you dehydrate in a hurry out in the sun. It's a full house here. A straight keep formation on third and one, and then they break it with a couple of wing backs and give it to the sole remaining back, who is Tony Jordan, and he leaps for a first down. So a new play for Gene Stallings and the Cardinals, who had so much trouble last week on short yardage situations. This time it's the fifth round choice out of Kansas State Jordan. That looked familiar, Dan, wearing that 32. I, it's really striking. When we were down on the field yesterday, I, I really took a double take looking at Tony Jordan because he looks so much like a young Otis Anderson. Drafted by the Cardinals in 79 and a multiple All-Pro in Jordan with the same number, the same physical build. Uh, he almost walks exactly like Otis Anderson. Now, if he runs like Otis Anderson, then the Cardinals have found themselves something special when you talk about a fifth-round draft choice. Stump Mitchell is split, and Farrell, the sole running back in this set, he slips, and he stopped at the 45 after a pickup of a couple. Gary Cobb, the longtime Detroit and Philadelphia linebacker, recently signed by Dallas, makes the tackle. He's an interesting story. He was originally drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. There he is, number 59, back in 1979. He was a ninth-round draft pick, and they let him slide. He went up and became a starter for Detroit and a good one. Spent the last few seasons with Philadelphia. And I guess Gil Brandt would prove that he was right. Went back and got him again. Dallas has really been shredded in terms of injuries of their linebacker core. And thus, Tom can help to fill the bill. Second down and seven as Lomax retreats. And goes deep, looking for Green. And Green became the defensive back on the play as the pass was underthrown. Robert Williams with the coverage. What's the first thing, Frank, that the quarterback coach tells the quarterback? Never, never, never underthrow the fly pattern. And, and particularly Roy Green, you no way you can underthrow him, really. If you take your regular seven-step drop, it's almost impossible to overthrow Roy Green. And again, they work on Robert Williams. We've talked about that from the very outset. He's filling in for the injured Ron Francis. But that was a regular seven-step drop back, and you could, honestly could throw that as far as you could throw it, and you would not overthrow Roy Green. You can tell, by the way, that Lomax released the ball that he tried to guide it in there, tried to baby it and drop it in, and that seldom works. Third and seven, Cardinal shotgun from the 45. 6.38 to go in the half. Phoenix on top, seven to three, and Lomax has to take a timeout. I don't think he, he got it. it? No, no, the clock was down to zero. Didn't get it. Well, that's what happens. It takes time for the coaches on the sidelines to make up their mind. It then takes time to signal in the play, and then the multiple formations and shifts. And deep, a deep pass. You've got to get your receiver back. That's right. And Green that time, Roy Green came back to the huddle as if it was the old days, and he didn't realize that the clock, the 45-second clock, starts at the end of the prior play. In the old days, he could have jogged back, walked back, and been there in time. But I not like now. It. It's got a great pace to it, I think. Shotgun on third down and 12. Lomax with a ton of time and then throws underneath. He has to settle for hitting Novacek, the tight end, well short of the first down. He's tackled by Owens, and they'll be forced to kick as Greg Horn comes in with 6.08 to play in the half. Now that's, you see, there's a pass that goes down into the books as a completion. 
And you walk off the field with a completed pass, but what purpose did that serve? It had no chance whatsoever of picking up the first down. I, I have a hard time understanding why you don't throw the ball deep enough to get a first down. Orange kick for Martin, Kelvin Martin, fielding at the 19, slipping to the outside and turning back. And it's a two-yard run back after a 35-yard kick. Dallas Bull, 541 to go in the half. Phoenix by four. Last decade, if a team starts 2-0, six times out of 10, they'll get to the playoffs. If you start 1-1, one one, about four out of 10. And if you begin 0-2, only one time in 10 do you get to the playoffs. And each of these teams comes in 0 and 1. Let me ponder that. Yeah, ponder that for a moment. Or 10. Herschel Walker takes the toss, breaking tackles, out past the 40 to the 47-yard line, running over people like a truck. Carl Carter makes the tackle. He does it like nobody else. He did that against New England, very same play a year ago. Broke that game wide open. We saw him a couple of weeks ago in exhibition do it. And there he is, little counter to the right, takes it, gets the block from Timmy Newsom. didn't even need the block, just runs right over Lonnie Young, down the sidelines. Strength, agility, timing, and speed. He's key got here, it all. Key here, it's out of the eye formation, and Herschel is a born tailback. He's talked to Tom Landry long and hard about the eye formation. Give me the ball seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. I'd just give it to that guy anytime he felt like it. First down from the 47. Pelour, Keith, Mervin makes the catch at the five-yard line. And that's stupid, Leonard. That is another stupid play by Leonard Smith. Carter got just murdered again on that route. And that may get Leonard Smith thrown out of the ball game. Carl Carter, the cornerback on the play that was beaten, and then Leonard Smith comes in with a cheap shot five yards out of bounds on Michael Urban. And Pelour could not have had more time to throw the football. And I agree, an absolutely stupid mistake, but let's take a look at Irving again. Little fake to the outside, little hesitation. Carter bought it all the way, and then Irving just sprinted right by him, and the ball was actually underthrown. And still, Carter was in so much trouble, and now we're going to see... Well, he's out of bounds the right there. Watch how he's... There he's out of bounds. Did he get them both down? And look at... Yeah. But, I mean, look how he takes eight steps before Smith hits him. First and goal from the three. Cross to Walker. Dallas retakes the lead. Demi Newsom leads the way. And Herschel Walker makes it 9-7. to seven. And Herschel may be hurt. He hit a cameraman right into the cameraman. And that's a fence you don't want to go over. I, some of you may have seen Robert Awald in preseason go over that fence, and there's a deep drop. There's like a submerged walkway about four or five feet below field level. Mm -hmm. There it is. If you go over the top of that, it's a long drop, and... Herschel hit that fence at a pretty good tilt. Let's take a look at it again. It's from the I formation, the toss. His favorite play, he gets to view the defense. The effective lead block out front by Newsom as he puts Lonnie Young to the ground, and then it's just a stroll. Walker was very slow. Sort of testing his leg, that's what it was. Oh, yeah. Rolled right up on top of him, and now he is jogging off the field. That's Ricky Hunley, number 51, who came in from behind, and Herschel got his leg caught in there at an awkward angle. And Cowboys holding their collective press. Their franchise looked to be in trouble. Well, you know what happens a lot of times? You relax once you cross that goal line. You know you've scored. You know the play is over. And... You start to slow down, wind down, relax, and all of a sudden you have to make a move, and Herschel got caught a little short there. Sendejas' kick is good, plus you're doing it in a stadium in which you've never played before, and you're very yeah. unfamiliar. That's a good point, Al. So Walker not really knowing what happens once you do get out of bounds in that corner. And they continue to look at Herschel on the sidelines. We'll take a look at it once again. Now you, as Dan said, you've kind of led up here. He's got the six points. He knows he's got it. Here comes Ricky Hunley. Ricky actually pulled up himself. 
and both of them go down, taking the cameraman with them, but right there is where they hit that little depressed area. Not one of our cameramen, of course. And you knew right away that something had happened to Walker. Point of view, tape at 11. Yeah, that's the kind of injury that happens a lot to players out on a football field with people falling down all the time. They fall on the back of your legs. So you can either get an ankle. Sometimes you can stretch an Achilles a little bit doing that. Another look, but you can see Herschel starting to slow down. First of all, the lens right in the head, but then Hunley right on his left ankle, and luckily Herschel was able to get it out mm. fairly quickly. And that cameraman took a, a shot, too. It's yeah. a good thing that's padded there. Woo! He goes right into the pass. 10-7 mm. Dallas. Well, we saw that in preseason here on, on a couple of occasions. It's very, very close to the boundary of the field. All the way around from the seven-yard line by Tickahema. Returns the kickoff out to about the 25 with 425 to play in the first half. Cowboys on top by three. You know, guys, I think the cameraman is still down. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a doggone shame, but I believe the cameraman is still injured and has not yet gotten up. Mm -hmm. You can see he's being tended to there behind the fence, and they have a medic there, and they are looking at it. Oh, yeah. Put that camera piece right in his eye, and he took the first shot. Meanwhile, they're having some serious public address problems here at Sun Devil Stadium. Yeah, right in your ear. A lot of glitches on, on opening night. Well, there's going to be a whole lot of people walk out of the stadium that can't hear. Yeah. And when you look at this stadium, and it's, it's, it's as close. The fence surrounding the field is as close as I've ever seen it in the NFL. And you get a pretty good idea right there. Again, it's, a, it's the home of Arizona State University, the Sun Devils. And uh, the guys coming in for the first time in the NFL are going to have to keep that in mind. Talking a little football, that was the Herschel Walker drive. He did just about everything. His running sets up the long pass from Pelour to Irvin. And then if Leonard Smith didn't help the Cardinals out at all by tacking on the extra yardage with that cheap shot on Irvin. They re-kick from the 30-yard line. With 4.23 to play in the first half. Having some serious sound problems. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. You know, you, you've been here long enough. You could say that. I wasn't going to say it worse. <laughs> a yard deep in the end zone. It's dropped, and it's a live ball, and Sikahema has to run it out to the 20, to the 30. Oh, he's great. And out of bounds at the 36-yard line is where he stepped out by Sikahema, who's been in the Pro Bowl the last two years. Isn't he fun to watch? They didn't think he, he would get the kickoff to him because they had moved a new man back there. They thought they would be kicking to Troy Jordan, but Sikahema got that one, and he was gone. The Tonga Terror by Sikahema drops the ball. I don't know if that in any way... It usually helps, Dan, oddly yeah. enough. And what it does, all of the coverage men coming down, they start to converge, they lose their lanes, and all of a sudden you find a little opening, and here comes Sikahema. From the 36 on first and 10, Lomax was hit as he throws, and they're going to rule it a sack at the 31-yard line for Brooks. Red Cashin right there to say grasp and control and a sack, or as the Cowboys like to put it, a trap. Number one draft choice from Michigan back in 85. He gets the penetration, beats his guard, then beats Earl Farrell. When you beat two guys and you get in on the quarterback, I guess you deserve it. The question mark there was, was Lomax in the grasp and the control before he threw the football? Red Cashin says he was, and I guess he has the only vote. Second and 16. Mitchell wrapped up at about the line of scrimmage with three minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first half, and we're going to isolate on Jeffco. A coming home party for Jim Jeffco, who had so many great games here for the Sun Devils. Just doing his job. Really wasn't blocked effectively by anyone. A lot of defense, defensive ends may have just continued upfield, and 
stayed out of the play, but he had to hustle to come back to the inside and make a hit. Blocking scheme a little strange with the jet coat out there. He's got a lot of quickness. Very slow developing play. He closed it down, stopped it literally right at the line of scrimmage. Third and 16. Phoenix from the 31 yard line. Over the middle, the open man is Novacek, and he has the first down as he gets to the Dallas 48-yard line. They threw to him underneath, and Walls finally makes the tackle after he sheds the tackle and picks up 23 yards and a big first down. Good eyeballs by Lomax. He was looking deep. You can see it from the end zone. Watch the protection, Frank. Great protection, and Farrell steps up to offer added protection. He wants to go deep now. He looks underneath, and there's Novacek, who kept it alive. He kept moving, and finally gave him the open target. And watch this move right here, the hurdler move to take him across midfield. Good effort by Lomax. So he wanted to go deep, had to check off, very patient. Good move. Sprain left foot for Herschel Walker is the report. He will return. Farrell takes the toss and down, gets him from behind. Stops him for no gain, and we're going to come up to the two-minute warning. Cardinals have all three timeouts remaining. They trail by three with two minutes to go in the first half in Tempe, Arizona. The Dallas Cowboys, 10, and the Phoenix Cardinals, 7. Arizona, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. Monday night football as the Phoenix Cardinals play their first home game. Last week, a loser at Cincinnati. Cowboys losing to Pittsburgh. And right now, with two minutes to go in the half, it's second down and 10. Phoenix, as they trail by three, and Lomax gets Ooh. sacked by Kevin Brooks, having a big half. Well, I guess he got the one sack, and it felt so good. Why not go for another one? He comes around on a stunt that time, working from his defensive tackle, loops around to the outside, and Lomax didn't see him coming. There's Brooks right at the right of your screen. Watch him come in. Now he loops around back to the outside, and Tootie Robbins not able to get back out and bump him off before he just goes right over the top of Neil Lomax. By design, Dan Jones coming down, Brooks are circling around. Absolutely. That's called an E-T. And the E is the end, the T is the tackle, and E means the end crashes to the inside first. The tackle loops around to the outside, and Jim Schaffner, the Cardinal offensive coordinator, hopes this play works. Third and 15. Intended for Green and almost intercepted by Everson Walls. In his hands and he couldn't hold it. Boy, you wonder how he dropped that one. Yeah. Lomax dodges a bullet because he throws right into the teeth of the coverage. No chance in the world for a completion here. Four Cowboys. Right? Has Green just sandwiched. Green didn't want to have anything to do with it either. Boy, there aren't many corners in the game, if any, that have better hands than Everson Walls. And that seldom would he have had an interception any easier than that one that he dropped. Horn's fourth punt. The rush was on. He gets it away. Comes to the near side. Fielded on the run by Martin at the 24-yard line. And he brings it back out to the 34-yard line. And Manny Hendricks put the rush on Horn that time and nearly blocked it. Only a 34-yard kick. So 111 now to play in the first half. Remember, Dallas took a timeout on its very first possession, so they have two remaining in the half. Well, if you're the Cowboys having the ball at the 34-yard line, you've only got a three-point lead, you'd have to think that you're going to go for it. Look how close this came to being blocked. And the rush that was put on will get the Cowboys good field position. They could have been deep down there. They can think pretty much with their ordinary offense out here. They won't have to be too terribly conservative with it. Manny Hendricks almost looked like he went too far in front of the punter that time. If he might have been a, a yard deeper, he may have gotten the kick. And they begin their two-in oh. offense with a shotgun, and Pelour wasn't looking, and it's all he can do to fall on it. Back at the 16. Well, I don't... Pelour hadn't even started the count. He was looking downfield. He wasn't even looking for that ball. But that's when it was supposed to be snapped. The whole offensive team moved in unison. Just looking at it from our vantage point, it looked like everybody was in sync with the exception <laughs> of Pelour. Tom Rafferty, the center, the shotgun snap was a good one right there, and Steve was just looking off to the right. Well, he just made the follies. And because of that loss, which amounts to 18 yards, the Phoenix Cardinals started to say St. Louis takes a timeout. So the Cardinals, now figuring they have him pinned deep second and 28, well, Tom Landry. stop the clock. 57 seconds. Steve Pelour better hope that 
Tom Landry didn't look at Danny White to ask him if he was warmed up or not. I mean, this is, uh, Pelour can do so many things for you. He's certainly one of the best athletes on the team. Maybe the best athlete that's ever played quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm talking about Roger Staubach as well. I remember some of the Cowboy coaches telling us that it's number 16, Pelour scrambles and moves around better than any quarterback they've ever had. But the critical mistakes, the you know, you don't want to call them dumb mistakes, but things like that, that those are kind okay. of things that just shouldn't happen to an Dan, NFL quarterback. Dan you're, Dan, you're talking all around it, though. It just uh, isn't happening for him. He's been given this job over and over. And each time there have been problems. And I'm sure Tom told him to go back in the ball game, run some plays, try and get the time off this clock. Let's go in and get a regroup. We've got the lead, but we're deep in our own territory now. And you'll see the Cardinals start to use their timeouts, I do believe. They've already used one at second down and 28. They try to set up the screen, and it's off Newsom's fingertips. And that's the best thing of all that could have happened for the Cardinals because they don't have to use a timeout. And the clock stops on the incomplete pass with. 51 seconds, third and 28. Yeah, but that's a high percentage pass. You should get the completion out of that. And I'm sure Newsom was thinking, I'll get the completion. I won't go out of bounds unless I can, and I'm going to try and get good yardage. This year going to complete probably 80, 85% of the time right here. It's going to be tough to get it for yards, though, because the Cardinals only rushed three people. And that means when you've got eight back in coverage, a screen is tough to run. You'd rather have a blitz when you have a screen set up so you get everybody out of the way and get to the perimeter. A look at the... Cardinal move west at halftime, third and 28 as Pelour retreats. Set up the screen to Herschel Walker, and he'll want to stay in bounds. And instead, he goes out of bounds at the 28 yard line. And there's another break for the Cardinals right there. That stops the clock with 44 seconds, and they have two timeouts remaining. And Herschel went out of bounds on purpose. He did that intentionally going out of bounds. His head wasn't totally into what he was doing right there. Mm -mm. Or else he would have just sat down or. In reality, when you look at that play, he maybe should have broken it back to the middle of the field. He might have made something big happen. He only had one guy to beat. So the Cardinals are able to save a timeout. They're going to get the ball back. Saxon's kick. Sikahema calls for a fair catch. Comes up and makes it at the 40-yard line. Oh, what a great play by mm. Sikahema. Hey, that is, that's the kind of thing where if you don't feel that punt, it may bounce another 20 yards, and he had to run 30 yards to get it. That's why he goes to Hawaii and has for the past two years in the Pro Bowl. And he gives the Cardinals great field position at the 40, and you really have to concentrate. You have to look that ball right into your hands. And he not only is a good return man, he has sure hands. He was very confident when he went up to take that football. Now, the Cards, following a rather bizarre series of plays by the Cowboys, are in good field position. And they have two timeouts left here as well, so plenty of time for them. 37 seconds. They're down by three. And Lomax goes to Farrell over the middle into Dallas territory. First down at the 42-yard line. Boy, that's what you can do when you have a couple of timeouts to work with. You can go to the middle, and that's where you are always going to find the open territory. And they take a timeout here, and had Walker not gone out of bounds, this would have been their last timeout. As it is, they still have one. Frank, right. your point is very valid. You can still work the middle of the field when you can stop the clock. You're not limited to a sideline pattern. Dallas playing the perimeters, gave up the middle, and the Cardinals had the right call for the Cowboy defense. There's the brain trust. Schaffner on the left. He was with the Dallas Cowboys along with Gene Stallings there in the middle. Both of them trained under Tom Landry. Interesting to watch the chess game going on as Landry thinks he knows exactly what Stallings will try to do against him, and of course that works vice versa. And Landry is convinced that he's, it's hard to tell him uh, that Stallings won't stay pretty much with what he thinks works for him, and I think he's been right thus far tonight. Stallings has stayed with the man-for-man -man primarily, and it's been effective. Well, the Cardinals are what? At the 43-yard line of the Cowboys. You figure they're going to have to get down to at least the 30. That would make it a 47-yarder for Del Greco. I think they might be feeling all the way or thinking all the way. At the 43 with one timeout left. Catch by Smith. Now he's at the 35-yard line. Cardinals don't want to use the timeout here. Clock ticking down, 14, 13. Now Lomax to just throw it into the ground to stop the clock with 10 seconds. Now the ball at the 35-yard line. They're 52 yards away. 
Oh, and they gets, have a 52-yard uh, field goal attempt away, and they have one timeout left. This gets very interesting now. If you hit a receiver, you dance him around a little bit, you could run that 10 seconds off the clock very easily. Well, the one thing you have to do, I think, is uh, I don't know that you can let your quarterback take a seven-step drop. I think whatever pass they throw, if they decide to throw a pass, is going to have to be a shorter drop, either a three-step or a five-step, a, a, a quicker delivery. They're going to come out of the shotgun here on third down and two from the 35. Lomax, and they'll have to take the timeout, but that's a good move, throwing it to Ernie Jones and taking their timeout at the 24-yard line, so it'll be a 41-yard attempt. Well negotiated by Lomax. Yep. And this man, Gene Stallings. Good call. The quick slant. Working out of the shotgun, Neal only took two steps back, delivered the ball in a timing pattern all the way. Very efficient, this drive by the Cardinals, but again, it's all meaningless if they don't convert the field goal. Del Greco, well, they deserve to get it. They handled that very well. Last year, from 40 to 49 yards away, he was two of four. And he missed a 40-yarder in the first quarter. Now he'll set up for a 41-yard attempt on the final play, or what should be the final play, of the first half. Dallas on top by a score of 10-7. to So that play on which Walker went out of bounds is a very big play. It gave the Cardinals that extra timeout. They move within Del Greco's range. They'll spot it now at the 32-yard line. It'll be a 42-yard attempt. Stop the hold. And they fake it. And Del Greco inside the 20, out of bounds at the 16. What? What? What, what is that? I don't have a clue. Now, wait a minute. Is this a design play? It looked like a design play. I can't yeah. believe this. It's amazing. If, if you're a field goal kicker, if you can't give him a shot from 42, why is he on the team? Well, you might as well just release the guy if you don't have confidence. A design play all the way. Stout flips it to Del Greco. Joe Bostic out in front, but, I mean, you're counting on that play having to go 35 yards to the goal line because only three seconds, you're not going to get another play. That's nuts. <laughs> they did it so beautifully. They set it up absolutely perfectly, and, and I don't understand that at all. Oh, I'm afraid that's where the players go to the locker room looking over their shoulders and saying, who the heck called that play? Yeah. Wow. Well, that livened things up. <laughs> that's the end of the half. Very much a design play. Perfect snap. It's only a 42-yard kick to tie the game and a little flip. I'll tell you what, Phoenix. The Cardinals are in town. Yeah. 10-7 at the half, Dallas, back after the minibus, and he just threw it up. And